Welcome to the Terry Awesome Fishing Show. This little episode was brought to you, wait for this, by an abject failure on another fishery I had. I was going to catch crucian carp. I drove over an hour in traffic to get there. The place was full of anglers, all wanted to catch crucian carp, but we had a cold snap of weather. It gave them lockjaw, big time. Their lips were well and truly zipped. I had rug, I had roach, I had no crucians. So I thought, where can I go? Got up the next morning, did a few jobs, kept away from the wife so I didn't get too many jobs, had the afternoon spare and went to another fishery called Vale Farm where I had a ball. It just goes to show you, two different fisheries, temperature changes affected one, it didn't affect the other. How did I get on? Wow, guys sit back, get the candy floss, and pour yourself a tea or something because this one, a long one, it's an epic. It's the movie. Well guys that turned into something a disaster because I had that one roach, I had a rud, nice rud, and then the bites just died off and that is the cold air I believe. I sat watching pole anglers and they're normally really good at catching fish. I watched them all sitting there like garden gnomes not catching very much at all. So what I do is generally take an oversight of all around the lake and I see a day to go water you can see who's catching who's not. You get a general idea whether the fish are feeding or not they weren't so cut my losses on that one i've come to another fishery actually come 180 degrees the opposite direction to a place called Vail farm fishery it's a heavily fish day ticket water but there's fish in it to be caught and i'm going to be trying to get you some fish on this float okay now this is a float now it looks like a waggler but it's very very slim i think what they call these is an antenna float because it's very very thin up here look, and, and quite delicate actually easy to snap if you don't keep them in a proper box. Now I've got them at the on the standard I'll just pull this off for you and you can hopefully see this is one of those well you're gonna come off now. It's on there as you can see it's a little rubber float holder there. I've got a couple of locking shot. Now this only takes two BB and I don't know what they are about a couple of number eights either side. But what you're gonna do is you're gonna try and shot this down to here. Now to cock it it would take let's say the two BB which I've got here. That would probably get it to there. To get it down here, you would if you put another BB on it, would probably bury. It would just go. So from there to there on an antenna float is very very sensitive, and you can see just down here there's a yellow mark there. Hopefully you're seeing all this. Then there's a yellow mark there, and then there's a float, and that's because if you do shot it to that level, you you can get such a sensitive bite. Either push they're gone, or you get what's called a lift bite. Now you can see that yellow come up. And there that would be another bite you can even shot it just delicately on the bottom like this so you've got that movement and that coverage between the black part there you see so that's how you shot this one very tricky to shot this one to get it just right you've got to allow uh, for drag wind drift that sort of thing across the lake and um, I've got here you plumb the depth with a with a proper plumb bob and then I've got here I mean this is a day ticket water so I can't exactly talk and shout there's people all over the place tiny little about a number eight shot there a hook to nylon there that is about i've got four or five maggots on there to try it to start with um, i might have to go down to two if i'm looking for roach or rudd or smaller fish um, i suppose it's about 16 something like that but quite a wide gape hook so you can put a decent piece of corn on there as well so you see just a tiny shot there and this is the float very very slim hopefully you can see all that guys an antenna float now, something also exciting has happened because, look, you see there's loads of people, loads and loads and loads of people, kids everywhere, they're everywhere. Down there, I'm going to point with a rod, down there, I chucked some bait in, just off the corner of that bush, which is a fairly standard area to fish. But, I washed my hands down here. Now, within five minutes of where it took me to tackle up, I started seeing small fish dimple on the surface, and then I seen other fish, let's just put these maggots in here out of the way. I haven't actually cast out yet, I've just got this all rigged up to show you. I'm going to use this in my rod dress, the handles of my dreaded carp barrow. It's a great thing to, for ferrying deer around, I have to say. But just down here, I'm going to be using, all I've got is my regular ground bait here. Okay guys, regular ground bait. Load of maggots left over from the last session. A few have started turning into <laughs> very dark, casters those those would be those would be floaters but listen 
everybody here is going out with method feeders, which is not exactly rocket science, catching fish on a method feeder. We're trying to get float fishing. These antenna floats are so delicate. I should be able to pick some roach off over there, I would guess, or even a rud. And down here, there are definitely carp moved in. I mean, I've only been here five minutes and washed my hands, so I'm going to put a little bit more bait in there. We might even be able to show you a carp coming in. I've got polarizing. There's a swirl on the surface. I'm just going to... This is how close I'm fishing, guys. Well, I'm not even fishing yet. I'm just dropping some balls of ground bait. I've got to be careful because I haven't got a huge amount of ground bait. Well, <laughs> for me anyway. Just there. I don't want to go out too far. They're obviously very, very confident coming down in here. And they will, I reckon, because they come in when I've washed my hands off. And if I don't disturb them, I know there's fish going to come in there big time. There we go. Now what you can see on the top when that smooths off, when the fish puts their head down and their tail comes up like this waving in the surface, it disturbs that surface and you'll see swirling. And that's where you want to gently lower this float down. But first I'm going to try over here. Let's get a few maggots. Let's see if we can't entice one, one for them one for the rud. See if we can't uh, bait up here and see if we can't get a roach or something on this float. I just got, if you can see that there, two maggots covering the hook. One's up over the shank. That stops it sliding down on barbless and I might lose this one. It wriggle off but it's absolutely going nuts. Let's get it out there and see if there's any small fish. I'm going to cast past the swim and then bring it in a bit. Now what I will do guys, if I don't get a fish here, I will zoom in with the big camera, with this camera. I'm going to zoom in on the float and see if we can't get the bite for you. I'm also using that shadow line there, if you can see down my rod. There's a glare in the front here and then there's a shadow line, there's a bite. And I'm trying to use that, if I pull that float into the glare, I won't be able to see it so well, so I'm going to try and keep it. No, I missed that one. I'm going to try and keep it in that shadow line over there. Now you can fish two float rods, but generally it'll pay you to have a bite. Now I'm going to zoom in and show you that the float was stopped from uh, settling properly there. Wouldn't suppose there's a fish on there. No. Right, out we go again. I took about three inches off the float. Put it into where the ground bait's gone. We just wait for it to go down. I might even put the big camera on this in a minute so you can see the bites. There he is. What is that? Oh, hang on. What is this? Oh, big rad. Nice beef hat rad. Now, that shows you're just going a little bit deeper. It's got me a better stamp of fish. So if I keep feeding at that depth, I should get some more before the carp move in. Always get your disgorger, slide it down the line, push the hook out. How easy is that? Now that shot had just slipped there, so we give that another go. Oh my God, guys. Oh my God. Oh my God. Look down. Oh my God. I'm going to see if I can get the... <coughs> see if I can crawl down there. Man, they are so close. There's one. You should be able to see those swirling all the mud up on the bottom and disturbing. I can actually see a carp down there. You see the back of him. Here he comes, coming to the surface. You bet your life there's more than one there so you can see how close you can actually fish here. It's fish about five pounds. There's an even bigger one at the back there, looks about seven, eight pounds here. You might be able to see his tail. Let's get the big camera on this. I'll tell you, tell you what, people. Everybody is heaving their method feeders, catching fish out in the middle, but I don't think you can beat fishing really close, tight into the margins. In fact, I've got a match rod, 13 foot match rod. I'm going to be pushed to get close enough in to even hook one of these fish. Now you can just see the swirls, and this is made by the tail of the carp. He's got his head on the bottom, he's not taking floaters off the top. His head is down there digging on anything I've got down there, ground bait, maggots, casters, whatever I've got in there. 
His head is on the bottom, his tail on the top, and there's more than one fish in there digging and rooting around. Well, I've shallowed this float right up. There's those fish are just literally under the size of big like a ghost one down there. Oh, look at that fish. That fish has to be eight pounds. I've no idea what it's going to do to my match rod, but it won't be good, will it? Hang on a minute, guys. After all these years of fishing, I still get a little bit quivery when you get fish at close range like this. Hopefully we'll get it on one camera or the other. I'll tell you how many fish are down there. I'm just going to lower this float. Okay. Right in the middle of it. Hopefully you can see that float. Watch the float, guys. Don't strike hard. Don't strike hard, Graham. Just, oh, there's a big fish down there. Look at that one. It's a lovely one. I'm right in the middle of them. There's the float just down there. It's a tail right, right around the float. Still, I don't say it's going to be one of those days, isn't he? Oh, 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 there we go. There's a bonus. There's a bonus, guys. In amongst that lot. Carp aren't worried. And there you go. Nice perch. And perch do like red maggots. There's no question of that. They do like red maggots. Now, I'm not going to throw it back in there because the carp are going nuts. I think I'm going to change from the red maggots so I don't want to perch again. I'm going to put white on instead. Now, you might think these fish are incredibly stupid, but I think it's just the fact that nobody's been baiting up this close. And when you get to the afternoon, about three o'clock, they come round because everybody's chucking all their bait in. Here we go, guys. Nice. Here we go. Just lowering it right in the middle. Oh my MG, there are so many carp in there. I should think it's a load of other fish in there as well, not just carp. I just want to get right there. I can't even get my rod out to the right length. Swirls, boils, tails, fins poking around. They're digging on the bottom. Maybe I should have gone a little bit deeper. I can see one in here. Let's try there. That float does not want to bury. Oh dear. They'll suck it in and blow it out, trust me. That one won't. <laughs> oh, look at the bend in the rod. Oh. And this rod reel, by the way, closed face only has the back wind. It doesn't appear to lock up there. So I've basically got back wind or back wind. This was all caused through washing my hands in the water and the ground bait. So no fish that I can see out there, but they're absolutely rabid in here. There we go, he pulled off. Just bumped off the hook, that one, guys. Right, see if we can get another one for you. Well, guys, that one just pinged off, so I wonder, putting a bit of pressure on that with a smaller, fine wired hook, which I was using for roach and rud, it just sprung out. Sometimes it just spring out. Occasionally you'll see a hook that's absolutely straight, and you know that you've got to upgrade your hook size, but sometimes you get a very springy one, and it pings back and goes back into the same position as it came out of the packet, so you're never gonna know why you're losing fish. Best way is upgrade stronger wire hook, and that's what I've done. See if we can't get this float going under for you. <laughs> that didn't take long, guys. I think you saw the float go that time. Well, all because I wash my hands in the water right down there. See if we can get this one out with a stronger hook on it. Come on, fish, man. Thing is with the match rod, they pretty well do what they want to do. Oh, he's come off as well. That's two come off. Wow. Let's check that hook. 
the float slid down as well maybe did it pull through some weed now you can see here the shot I reckon that pulled through some weed and that jammed up and slid that shot down pinch it on a little bit more and as I say back to the drawing board there we go guys perch close in that tells me the carp haven't come in yet Get yourself one of these plastic discorders. Out it pops like that, and you can tell he's been feeding and eating those maggots down there as well. Should be okay there. Well, it's sods and all when you switch all the cameras on that you can't get a bite. I'm just going to give a little pinch of half a dozen maggots around that float. Give them a few seconds to sink. And hopefully they won't be able to tell the difference. There's a fish right by it. Absolutely right by it. I think you're still in the lens there with the camera. I can actually see with polaroids. You can see them knocking the float. Now they're what we call liners. That's a liner. That's called a liner. It's just where they knock the float. So you don't strike at that. You wait for the float to slide away. Which at the moment is not doing. That's because they moved over there. Let's try that one. Hopefully you can see that float just in the lens there. Okay. That's a lift bite, guys. Oh, that's a lift bite. And he went on. Somewhere in there is a little perch that came flying 40 feet through the air when I struck and landed in the stinging nettles. Poor little chappy. this time guys this one is looks like a nice rud he doesn't ping off that's a beauty that is a now look at the colors in this one that is what float fishing is all about is it not hopefully you can see that up there beautiful fins on it look look at these colors of the fins here you can't really mistake it for a roach barbless hooks that is, that's worth three carp, I reckon, that one. Let's get him back. I'm just going to put a few balls of bait in there, guys, just to keep any carp around there, digging and digging. Here we go. Am I switched on here? No. I'm going to try and get this float actually going under. If I can get it in close enough. There's a fish there. Wait a minute. Let's lower it, lower it gently. I think you can see the float there. I'm going to come back a tad to about there. I'm trying to do all this and zoom in at the same time, so there's every chance I'm going to miss the bite. There we go. We're set. The trap is set. I feel a few maggots around the float like that might entice them. So we just wait for that float to slide away. I've undershotted it there, so you can see it's sticking out well, and that's purely, obviously with the carp, they're just going to bury the float, hopefully. If I was fishing for smaller fish, I'd have it shotted much further down. But this way, hopefully you can see it on the camera, guys. That's what I'm hoping. I'll just have another check. There we are. That's it. You should see it on the camera. There's fish all around it. Oh, I just missed one. There's one very, very close in shore. Close, close in. Just don't take your eyes off that float, guys. 
I'm going to pull it back a little bit there. Should be okay there. Well, it's sod's law when you switch all the cameras on that you can't get a bite. I'm just going to give a little pinch of half a dozen maggots around that float. Give them a few seconds to sink. And hopefully they won't be able to tell the difference. There's a fish right by it. Absolutely right by it. <laughs> Guys, we're on. We're on. Good size fish. And you know when I got it, just about to unwrap the sandwiches. I've actually got the flask filled up, so I'm going to have a cold tea, I feel. Big carp on a match rod. I haven't got it yet, but... <sighs> I wish I had my Avon. <laughs> I could put some pressure on that one. Well, I switched cameras, people. I've changed over to the uh, head cam. This could, could go on for some time. He's not a million miles away, but there's the float just around the side. I don't need him going into the uh, into the rushes there. Thought he was about five pounds, maybe. He's a tad bigger. I don't know. See how close we can get him. He obviously didn't like the word close. God oh dear, oh dear. Oh, I felt him twang then. Means he could have turned around the other way. That's about as much as I can put on a match rod. How do they get them in the matches? That's what I want to know. How can you pile a load of calf out in a keep in a match in such a short space of time? Generally a match is what, three hours, something like that? Holy cow, guys, it's a decent finish. Well, there we go guys, that's a big fish, that's a nice big fish. That is a really nice carp, I think you'll agree. It's not a million miles away from 10 pounds. No wonder he gave me such a good scrap. Look at that one. There's some more down there as well. Well, obviously that commotion smooth the fish away. Put some more bait in there. Gives me a chance to have a bit of bait as well. And a, and, and a cup of tea here. Anybody who thinks tea in a flask is nice, think again, guys. It's wet and warm, that's about all there is to it. Well, what I might do is I might, I've got a pole here, and I might put the wide angle camera up there, so you can see if they come back, those fish, exactly how close I am fishing. It might be better for you to see it separately up there, and you might get the hook up as well. First, boot. Well guys, this is a different fish this time. A little silver fish, what we call silvers. Doesn't look like a roach or a rud. This one is a little skimmer. Like a little bream there. Match, matchmen's love catching these. There we go. Totally silver, very lively. Looks like a roach to youngsters really, but all you youngsters out there you can see no red fins and it's very, very silver. So quite a few fish of different species around. Easy to get out of the disgorger. And now fishing over there, there's nothing on the inside here. Just trying, fishing quite shallow and see if we can't get some 
rad on the go. So I'm just using a little pinch like this. Almost a pellet sized piece of ground bait. I'm throwing it out, if you can see that there, into that sort of looped shadow line there. It's just a little bit of a shadow over there. In fact, probably slightly right of that. It doesn't seem windy, but there's a bit of air drift here. Let's see if we can get out there. That's what I want to get there. And of course, here, what I've noticed, absolutely ideal. Oh, God, straight away on the drop. Straight away on the drop. That looks like a rad. That's because I threw that bait and it draws a fish towards the surface. There we go. Nice looker. Just nicked in there. Oh, come here, you. Anybody think we're taking him piking? Now, because I've only just thrown that ground bait in, I'm going to go straight back out and not throw any more feed out for a second. Drop it in the same spot just there. Hopefully you can see the shadow line where the float is. Yes, that's a better rud. And that's that little bit of cloud bait. Being as it's a different swim, I'm not going to get pestered by the carp. Wow, that guys is quite a decent rud. Look at that one. Oh, that is a nice one. Actually, when you look at him, this eye looks as though it's a bit bug-eyed, doesn't it? Like he's gone, whoa, what's cooking over there? Lovely looking fish, huh? Eh? I could do with catching those all day long. Another little pellet like I did last time. Just a bit. Same spot, see? A little bit right. If the maggots are okay, which they are, I'm going to try and follow that up. So as that's going down, I'm in the same area. There it goes. There he is. Man alive. They're taking on the drop now. Taking on the drop. What's this one? You've got to get it so that this, if you can see that up there, the bottom jaw is protruding over the top one. That means it's a rud. I'm just going to have one more quick fast cast while those fish are shoaled up on that ground bait. Just in that shadow line. And that float that time was going sideways, didn't even go underneath. Didn't sink, didn't bury as we say. Okay, no bite, so give it another 10 seconds and I should be thinking of a bit more feed going in. Because what happens, let's put this down. I do like these handles like this, this is really dead handy. I should definitely be using this again. And if you want to slop them, stop them sliding, just do that. It's perfect, perfect height. So the float can go up and down or it can go sideways either way if it starts moving something's moving it not the wind when it tips it aside if it's drifting straight like this just going through the water straight then obviously it's just wind drift you're off the bottom but if it starts going at an angle something's pulling it so that's what you should be looking for just going to lip. maybe they want a few more maggots out there just a little pinch not too much and then I've got to follow up so that's sinking down Oh, that's my reason. That's my reason there. Now that, guys, is a sucked maggot. Can you see that? Being sucked and chewed by a small fish. That is no good. That is no good. But it, it tells me the fish are out there. Let's just nick two on. Could probably drop to one. And ideally we'd go to a, a smaller hook. But the problem is... Sooner or later, when you're feeding like this, you're going to get Mr. Carp poke his big fat nose in. Just when you're enjoying yourself catching small fish on the float, he comes along. Now, it surprise me if I get a bite fairly quickly on that. Shall I put it down? I dare put it down. So what's happening, in the few seconds that that takes to go down through the water like that, my float say this deep. Well, after my second or third cast, the ground bait's on the bottom. So, if anything, I needed to go a little bit deeper with my float, just with that setting. There's a good tip there, guys. This is absolutely perfect. There we go. Oh, I bumped, up, I bumped a good fish off then. That was, that was a nice rud then. This one's a bit different, guys. It's a better bream.
Well, by bouncing between that swim out there, fishing for the rud, that gives this one time to settle down. And I have seen big tails going in there again, swirling up. So I'm going to try and get one hooked up on camera. Don't know if we got the first one or not, but we're going to give it another go there now. I can see the water actually moving where they're digging. So just lower the float down, you might see the float go away. It's amazing how you, you, can't, you can't see anything without Polaroid except the swirl. You put this on, you can physically see the tails digging. I'm not going to throw any more bait in there. Last time I threw some bait in there, it did spook them off. So that will give the chance, if I fish around here, try and hook up another car that rests the rud swim over there. There's a fish down there, guys. I don't know if you can see that one. Just see his tail digging. I can see him with polarizing glasses. Right on the surface there. Yes, another sandwich. And just look at all the ground bait that's been stirred up off the bottom. By the fish digging around, they brought the ground bait and feed up to the surface and spread it out. Well, guys, I've got the camera on higher up now. Maybe you might even see the, uh, the fish coming back in there. There's definitely fish down there now. The worst that I spooked them with the maggots. I'm just going to put some red maggots in here. Now, two. There we go, in with the float. This is how close I'm fishing. I can barely get the rod in. I've got to actually hold the rod halfway up the blank. So never neglect margin fishing now. I had two, drop two. Of course I could fish standard method feeder and probably catch loads of fish. But it's just a little bit different fishing in close like this. And there's a fish right under the float, right under the float. I think it's a ghost, I think it's a very light coloured ghost one. Oh I've got him on boys. <laughs> Hopefully you saw the float go away then. Fingers crossed anyway. That was on three red maggots. And I would say I'm fishing 24 inches from the edge of the bank. Mind you, long way from getting the fish yet. If it is the Sort of ghost one, very light colour. I think it's a ghost cart. It's quite a good sized fish. Wow, back winding big time. Back winding all the way. And there's another carp just down here in the swim, in the, in the margins there, close in. Now, I've just seen some fish up on the surface. So, having no bed with me, why not take off the crusts of your sandwich, just put them down in the bait box, keep them as a spare in case at the last minute of dusk, the fish don't go on the inside, you can then go floater fishing. Don't miss a trick. And obviously, don't eat all your sandwiches, just the soft bits, save the crust for the carp. Oh camera up guys. I tell you what, I'm exhausted, mostly from the number of fish that are pinged off that I've been fighting, one for about 15 minutes. Who would have thought you could have had such a great session on a little float like this, an antenna float. So sensitive, unbelievable, but if a fiddler get it shotted, and you know, on still conditions, not on big windy conditions, margin fish, and I think it takes some beating, small fish, and you can obviously get big fish on it as well. Anyway, time to pack up. The wind's gone down. It's a beautiful late spring evening. I don't know. Is it all to go home? You know the answer, don't you? One last cast. No, tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to catch one on the other rod. There. Now, I can, I can, if the wife phones, I can say, 
I hadn't finished the filming, I just wanted to catch one on the other rod. This float, by the way, is called a Billy Making Kennel Grey. Probably don't even make them now, I'd say it's 35 years old. Old Dave in Old Berry Hill Lake. Um, Dave Roberts, a matchman there who runs the uh, shop, there's a lot of shop stuff there. He liked this float, he knew exactly what this float was. He said, that is a Billy Making Canel Grey. It's a collector's piece. I better not lose it. Ultra, ultra sensitive. Only takes two BB. Let's see if I can't get a fish out on this one. I'm going to show it right up. These fish are coming in so close now. They'll be eating out my hand soon. Two maggots like that. It can be red or can be white. Just going to drop it in the margins. Obviously that last fight spooked all the fish. I can actually take the umbrella down now because the wind's gone and it sort of blocks me off and other anglers perhaps uh, fishing really close to me, you know, it gets a bit distracting when I'm trying to film and stuff like that. So I thought I was trying to keep a bit of sound down so that you guys can hear what I'm talking about and don't get all mumbling in the background. I think I'll take the there. It really is bright now and maybe there's a fish moving down there. Oh God, oh God, I'm never going to get home. Never going to get home. It's shocking. Fishing for 55 years and I'm still completely bonkers. Right, umbrella. Well guys, hopefully you can hear me. The fish are definitely down there. I've got hardly any ground bait left. It's all getting welled in. Maggots. You guys pile into that one. Right, let's try my Billy making canal grey float. Oh, nice big common down there. I don't think Billy making's float wants that one. <laughs> There's so many carp down there. The float's frightened to cock. It doesn't want. It doesn't want. <laughs> oh God! Oh no! Nice soft rod, actually, guys. This rod I paid one pound for from a skip. All it needed was rug ring. I think two rug rings, one or two rug rings. There's absolutely nothing wrong with it, and I'm getting stripped out. Oh dear! <laughs> the good old Billy Mason canal. Now. If I could get some line on the reel, I'd be okay, wouldn't I? It's not looking good. <laughs> I've got eight yards left before I go on to the uh, Victorian cotton. <laughs> oh God, let me kick the camera over. He's going to the next lake. Now you know these people when I'm playing this, I'm not trying to be nonchalant and uh, casual, just done a lot of fish fighting so I know nothing's going to happen for a minute. Don't horse them, don't try and stop them when they're running. If they want to run, let them run. Look, there he goes. I just pop the drag off two turns and I'm going to have to lose line or I'm going to break off. As soon as he stops, another click up, I'm winding down the line. Don't just churn it so it's spinning. Pull back wind down the line. You do not want that spool revolving at the same time as you're turning the handle because that puts a spin in the line. What's this? What's that? Get here. Actually this mic guys is uh, donated by, can't think of his name now, he's an electronic wizard, engineer and it's an <laughs> omni varia vocational mic or something. Basically when I turn my head away um, the sound doesn't go down. Unfortunately, I think it's all in mono for you guys that like wearing headphones, it's all coming out of one ear. It's time to get one more fish. Oh dear, wow, bonefish. Hey, bonefish. There have been two guys fly fishing here today off the top, they are getting them off the top, especially in the evening, it's always good. Man, 
His commons do go well, no question of that. Now, I know I'm on a match rod, but still. Just take my time. Can't horse them with a match rod at all. Yeah, there's the float. Looks like a mirror. Five pounds, something like that. Boom, hooked. One feet from the air. About a foot or so. Foot to two feet from the edge of the bank. Give you guys a different angle here. We get bored at the same angle. Or not. There we go. There we go, guys. Um, <laughs> Can anybody spot the deliberate mistake? That's right. I'm now at the length of my tether and the net's over there. Oh, dear. Saturday. See what we don't have a full film crew, don't you? Oh, it's still stripping me. <laughs> the, cameras. <laughs> the camera's all over the place. He's in. There we go, people. Yes, another carp. There we go, guys. Not only in the margins, on the float. So delicate, that float. They've barely got to touch it. And they're hooked. So try margin fishing with one of those antenna floats. It's great fun, especially if you see the fish swirling around it. And thanks for watching the Totally Awesome Fishing Show. Looking out for the Totally Awesome Outdoor Show, Mike's program and a copy of the downloadable, free to download, Haze Dread, Awesome Angler. We'll get this guy back. I keep fishing and fishing and fishing. Way past tea time, it's soon going to be bedtime. But anyway, what I'm going to try and do is get these fish feeding, perhaps not catch them, and see if I can push this pole out and show you how close they are coming to the bank before we go home. Now this activity, as close as it is, is called preoccupation, particle bait saturation. And why these fish are going nuts like this is because I'm fishing maggots, which is a particle bait right in close. They're obviously on the ground bait, but trust me, it's those maggots that these fish are digging around, trying to get out of the bottom. It's one of those things where you could use maybe garden peas, you could be using sultanas, but you need sort of multiple amounts, small, little and often baits, small baits generally going in there, and you can see the activity you can get. Now, a lot of anglers miss this. Do not neglect that margin fishing, guys. When you see that water moving, being, uh, you know, basically displaced by the tail of a feeding fish, why don't you put some extra bait in there and you get a hookup, and also you get a real emptying like this. <laughs>